Hi, I'm Rubia. And I'm Matt. And this is Sounds Like on Anderton's TV. Morning, Matt. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Are you? I'm good. This is day two of Sound Like Filming. It and is. we start in the day nice and heavy because that's how we feel. Yes. We're going to try and sound like Stefan Carpenter of Deftones. Oof. Deftones came out in the new metal era back in the day, uh, mid 90s, and they're still going today. It's still as strong as they were when they started. Yeah, they're definitely like survivors of that scene. Yeah. Um, still, yeah, still huge, still awesome. So Definitely huge in sound and in size of profile. Yes. He uses a combination of sevens and eights, actually has a bunch of signature things, mm. um, but sevens, eights, and baritone versions um, with ESP. Mm. Um, so I think we're going to have a challenge on our hands trying yeah. to get the right tuning. And he also uses loads of weird tunings but trying to get the right tuning for the right song with one guitar. Well, that's the thing. It's it's one of those, I think a lot of these new metal artists, because it was in an experimental period of time where sevens had become popular as well with Korn and you know, Limp Bizkit even used sevens. There's loads of specific sounds to get. So we're, we're struggling to, we've got 1500 pound budget as normal. Yep. So to try and get the right guitar with EMGs and to try and get the right Capability. He uses axe effects now. He does. I mean, he used to use uh, like rack mounted amps, mm. um, but has moved on to axe effects. So I think we we need something a guitar that is just massively versatile. Yeah. A an amp that's pretty versatile. Yeah. Maybe with some multi effects, multi effects, or inbuilt effects, or something. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's see. This is going to be a good one. It is. Let's get a guitar. The, the only sevens on the ASP website were baritone sevens in his signature. Yes. We, this is what happens when we have to do a uh, sound like, which is quite, there's a lot resting on it. Matt starts to double guess everything, which is good. That's why he is the very thorough in his job. Uh, and I'm the guy that goes, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Check in, I've got to check these things. I want the whole ground to shake when I do that. It, that's what I, it feels like that's what should happen if I go. This is a nine string. So this is one more string than Stephen Carpenter would use. It is ridiculous. I feel like I'm holding a cricket bat. Like genuinely, I could, I could totally play a game of quick cricket with this thing. But more like a bass. I mean, look at the string. Look at it. I could, I could legit slap if I was a good bass player. Naturally, this is a seven string. This is the Jake Bowen. Uh, this is the JBM 27. Unfortunately, we can't use it because we're not. We don't do someone else's sig for someone else's rig. So we found this uh, Stephen Carpenter signature, but it's second hand. So we can't use it. It's an eight string. Um, we're thinking of going seven string. Yes, we are. As, with, I think the main thing for us is EMGs and a tuning that we that can handle. Uh, their tuning. So if we can get a longer scale seven, if they do a longer scale seven, then we'll, I suppose we'll do that because I think it's more important that we cover the ground of if it's an eight string or if it's a seven string. So if we can find a longer scale seven, we should do that. Yes. I was just pointing out, the, the, like, like for example, this. Yeah. This is 429 pounds. This is an Ibanez seven, uh, eight string. It's non-specified pickups, but the thing is, they're not EMGs, it's an eight string, and I think that's probably, I think we need to stick with the EMGs. But purely tonally. I think it's important. That I think when you tune in that low, it's important that the pickups are the right pickups. But it massively narrows our options when it comes to guitar choice though. It does, but that's our, that's our, that's our, this is our reference point. This is our benchmark. Yeah. This is an LTD, uh, well, ESP LTD, seven string with EMGs. However, it's not the right shape. We also just found this, which is a secondhand Ibanez eight string with EMGs, but unfortunately, it is secondhand. This actually looks like a Floyd, but it's not, did you know that? I did know that. Yeah, it's just a solid fixed bridge with fine tuners, so it's quite, quite handy, but um, yeah. 
Can't use it, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, no second hand, and as we've said before, no uh, other people's signature stuff. Yeah, this is a big stumbling block. We don't have any eight strings with EMGs. However, sevens, eights, you can get without EMGs. Yes, you can. But, but I, you I really want important. something yeah. with that, like the high output, the, that bite. Yeah, and I think it's also important to say that at this point, because we're so we're so limited. Um, and because Stefan Carpenter has four signature models to cover their back catalogue, we're literally going to have to get a guitar that covers a certain period, because at this point, it's like, well, what do we do? <laughs> so we found this, and this is a six string. Right, it's got EMGs, it's similar construction, and it kind of looks similar to Stefan Carpenter one, which is here. Which is this one, oh, right? Come the deck's so big down. it comes with it. So, Except for the pickup configuration, it's it's kind of similar. So we were like, that's promising. And then Matt, being the legend that he is, yeah. found in the back corner there that is a seven string a version. A seven string version, which is, you know, same guitar, pretty much identical, but it has a cheeky extra string. Yeah. Um, See, this one here says £947. However, this one is £850. We don't question it. We don't make the rules. But no. yeah, £850. Seven string, the EMGs we've been looking for. Yep. It's S type, so like super strat type. Well, I guess it's 650 pounds for amps, pedals, and whatever else. Oh, I, well, I don't know what to do. We're always gonna have to go and see what we can find. So we found ourselves in the boutique room after basically evaluating the situation being we have a guitar that's pretty much ruined our budget for this. 850 quid-ish, yeah. which gives us another 650 left for everything else. Yeah. And that's not, I think probably that's breaking records. We don't normally spend that much on a guitar. How can we do that with 600 pounds? I mean, the cheapest valve combo we can find is about 550 quid. Exactly. And, but we need more than that. Yeah. He, he used to use, I think, Marshall JMP rack units mm. and a bunch of rack effects, a yeah. bunch of pedals, he's used all sorts. And now, like we said before, it's Axe effects. Which is the key word there, Matthew. It is, because that is where we get into digital amplifiers yes. um, and effects. And we were just talking and had one of those slight eureka moments, which some of you might dro drop your jaws, but we think it's probably quite a good idea. And that is, the, ampli the Atomic Amplifier pedal. Which happens to be right behind us here. So this, if you guys are aware of it, is a digital amp modeling pedal uh, that's updatable. You know, a lot of people have spoken very highly of it. it. You know, it can come to rival some of the more expensive, higher end modeling stuff. It's got loads of models in it, 5150s, Mesas, Marshalls. But also Digital has, effects. has some effects, yeah, which basically is for about £550. Well, that gives us about £100 left for anything else we need. And the trick here is that with Axe Effects, you can put it into a cab or you can go straight into the PA with a direct out. Yeah. With this, you can take a direct out straight to the PA. Yeah. So we're technically not cutting corners, if you think about it, because we don't necessarily need a cab. When we come to record this and get tones, you'll be hearing direct straight to the computer. We will have a cab in the room though, so we can hear what we're doing. Well, there's no other option. It's like this. We can't even get a powered speaker for a hundred pounds. We could get a nice camo strap like he, he uses. Yeah, all that. So there you go. That's, we're going to try this. <laughs>
made it to the video room. Yes, here we are once again. With our slightly uh, gamble rig that we've got for Stefan Carpenter of the Deftones. The Deftones. Yes. Well, obviously it's Deftones, but I just, <laughs> you know, the Deftones being the band. Of course. Yeah. Right. So basically it is a curveball rig. It's a bit of a different thing. We it's haven't mega tried simple this before. too. It's super simple yeah. with this delightful looking amp behind uh, beer here. Um, yeah. Well, so yeah. In a nutshell, uh, we've got A7 string. This is the LTD MH417BFM. Another catchy name. It is indeed. Um, so this is a seven. This is a baritone seven string, uh, and it's got it's loaded with EMGs, S type, and it kind of. It's it's as close as I think we could get to something reminiscent of one of his guitars and what yeah. he's famous for. Mm. Um, some subtle differences, like he, he actually doesn't have a neck pickup in any of his guitars, no, it's, it's only down. bridge and middle. Yeah. Um, so a slight limitation there. So I think nowadays he's using Fishman Fluence pickups. Right. We've got EMGs, mm. but he's used EMGs for years. Yeah. I guess it's it's difficult when guys change their stuff a lot, and we're having to try to find an all-rounder. Because but this is a bit of a possible. beast. It's good though, yeah. And so, it's like 850 quid, isn't it? It is 850 pounds. Yeah. Feels good though. Nice top on it. It looks nice. It's nice and metal. And uh, I guess the only thing is that we were trying to play things like you've seen the Butcher from Diamond Eyes. And he probably had a much thicker string on it than I did because he tuned down to F sharp, which yeah. is so low. Um, but I think we managed to pull it off just not playing too hard that the string clearly detunes, but you know. It's a good guitar, solid, well made, made in uh, South Korea, and it's just solid. Well, that's just running into the Atomic Amp, yeah. which is doing everything. That's it doing is. everything, literally, and then straight, we were, just so you know, we're taking a line out into this PA speaker, powered speaker here. For us. Yeah, so we can hear it. Yeah. Um, and then there is the other cable is off into the control room for the audio you'll hear. Yeah, the stereo direct out from yeah. the back. And as we said in the store, the whole justification for this is that Stefan Carpenter uses Axe FX. Now, obviously, he may have a reference cab on stage or just have that come into his fallback at the front, but what the people out front will be hearing is his Axe FX, I would assume. So we kind of took that philosophy and went, well, you know, if that's how he would play live, then I guess you can do the same with this. I know people that use these live and they're just from through the PA. Oh so yeah, of course. It, you know, so if that was our justification. So it might be a bit of cutting corners, but at the same time, there was no way to get this guitar for 800. We just couldn't, yeah, for the money. It was, we decided that we wanted EMGs yeah. um, or something as close to, mm. and yeah, this is what we've come out with. Yeah.
In terms of achieving the tone, I found a pre I made a preset and it was based around a plexi. There was no way of knowing exactly what his presets were or what he uses, but I found a plexi and it kind of had a similar sound. So we do know he used Marshalls though, the rack yeah. gear before all the all the um, digital gear. But yeah, so I, I dialed in a plexi tone and we've messed around with the mids a bit. And other than that, I mean, I was rolling I was rolling the volume down for. The cleaner stuff. Yeah, and yep. then, you know, just cranking the gain for the heavier stuff. And to be fair, we listened back to the CD and it sounds it sounds close to me. Yeah, so... I <laughs> mean, that's the rig. That is it. Obviously, it's one of those, again, where this does a million things. Yeah. And it's not only amp modelling, but it's got loads of built-in effects as well, which we didn't really use on, on the segments that we chose. No, it's it, to be fair, we could have done that. Um, we've spent a lot of time dialing in the preset to do this. I mean, this has probably taken us longer than any other sounds like to get it's, these sounds. Yeah. I mean, you were, you're only seeing the like edited down 15, 20 minute version, but we've been here since about, what, 9, 9.30 this morning and it's now like nearly one o'clock. <laughs> I really hope we've done it justice in some way because I know a few hardcore Deftones fans out there. Yeah, they're a, they're a popular band. And I'm a fan, and I don't think we would have particularly been comfortable with doing it if we didn't feel convinced in some way, so we hope you're convinced. Well, yeah, as usual, let us know what you think or what you thought of our Deftones impression uh, in the comments below. All the gear is in the description box as per the usual. All two bits. All two bits of gear, it's a long list. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. There you go, I've been Rabir. And I've been Matt. And this has been Sound Like on Anderson's TV.